BMW's 1 Series M Coupe may in some ways represent a break with M Power tradition, but in the things that really matter, it's devastatingly effective. Fearsomely quick, purposefully styled, and utterly focused on the business of going very, very fast. It's even relatively affordable and practical. A future classic in the making. M Power. One letter symbolising four decades of performance passion, all begun way back in 1978 with one machine, the BMW M1. An exotic supercar for the fortunate few, it was capable of rest to 60 in around five seconds on the way to a top speed of 163 miles an hour and only around 450 would be made. With this machine, the Bavarian brand's M division was launched. And with this one, it takes a great step into the modern era. This car, you see, also gets to 60 in around five seconds. It also, in the UK at least, has a limited 450 car production run. And it's also in every way worthy of the M1 badge it would wear, but for BMW's original 70s supercar. Meet the 1 Series M Coupe. Now we've seen M cars of every kind since the M1 first cemented the brand's high performance credentials, but virtually all have had two things in common. Uh, bespoke engines and the use of high revving, normally aspirated power. This one series though is the first M machine to take a different tack. First, in its use of an engine from an ordinary production model, uh, but more importantly, uh, in the fact that it's the first M sports car to use turbo power. The same kind of twin turbo induction we'll see on future M3s and M5s. Now that sounds sensible and pragmatic, but the way this car drives is anything but. A throwback to the times when BMW would build a touring car race machine, then offer a few road legal models for sale. A nod to the past then, in an M car perfected for the present. It's a tantalizing prospect. Enthusiast buyers expect BMW's M models to feature unique bespoke developed engines. And sure enough, this one's three liter straight six is indeed different from the apparently similar unit you'll find beneath the bonnet of a, uh, an ordinary 135i coupe using the Munich maker's older twin turbo arrangement. Purists may be disappointed to discover that that doesn't make it unique or exclusively M. This was an engine first developed for an ordinary BMW model, the Z4 S Drive 35 IS Roadster. But don't get hung up on that or the fact that it's not normally aspirated. This is a very fine engine indeed that fires into life with a mechanical rasp that quickly settles into a deep chested, potent burble. Already, you're looking forward to what lies ahead. Now, just how extreme the whole experience is gonna be depends uh, on just how prepared you are to take this thing by the scruff of the neck and drive it. And unless you're gonna be doing that on some kind of regular basis, I can't really see the point in buying this car thanks to BMW's decision to equip it with a set of springs erring on the side of uncompromising firmness, a, um, an Audi RS3 or a Porsche Cayman S will be a lot nicer to cruise around in. Um, now that wouldn't be a problem if, like M3 buyers, 1 Series M Coupe customers could specify optional EDC adaptive damping so that they could suit the car to their mood. But thanks to this car's lower price point, that just isn't possible. You can't specify a semi-automatic gearbox either with a paddle shift. Um, instead, you've just got this short shift six-speed manual box. No, what you get is uh, nothing more and nothing less than a refreshingly undiluted approach to the whole business of going very, very fast indeed. This uh, car with 340 brake horsepower may give away 80 braked horses to the uh, four liter normally aspirated V8 you'll find in an E90 series M3 but it's got more torque, up to 500 newton meters, and it's a car that's uh, the weight of two adults lighter. A car indeed that shares much of its underpinnings with an M3, the same chassis, the same suspension. 
Um, appropriate then that uh, its performance figures are almost the same. Rest to 60 in uh, 4.9 seconds on the way to an artificially limited top speed of 155 miles an hour. And you get all of that in a package that's even more driver centric, even more chuckable. One reason why this car is apparently faster around the circuit that all M buyers know and love, the fearsome Nürburgring Nordschleifer. It's true that some driver adjustment though is initially required with this car. Um, I don't think, for example, that the M Servotronic steering is this model's best feature, lacking the final nth of feedback that you need in really extreme cornering. And um, there's a similar story with the brakes, although here it's the opposite problem. They are, if anything, almost too good. They're also borrowed from the M3. Um, but you have to learn to feather rather than stamp on them. So effective are they if uh, fast fluid progress is to be maintained. Get on top of these things and in the dry, for care needs to be taken in the wet, you'll find few supercars able to get the better of this BMW on a fast twisting secondary road. You catapult from corner to corner, body beautifully balanced, six-cylinder engine snarling and the standard sport differential shuffling power and torque between the rear wheels for maximum traction at corner exit. It is, in short, in every way a proper M car, as you'd expect given that all three of the key ingredients are in place. Rear wheel drive, a limited slip diff and plenty of torque. Deactivate the two-stage DSC stability control system by this button here and uh, I found that uh, tail out slides are easier to induce than in almost any car I can recently remember driving. And of course, as with every M Division model, there's this must press M Dynamic Mode button. Punch it and uh, engine speeds rocket as a further 50 Newton meters of torque is released. The throttle sharpens and the limited slip diff is loosened as the car comes alive beneath you. Brilliant. Now, with a car of this kind, stance is everything. And with this model, BMW has things absolutely perfect. It may not be a pretty shape, but it's power packed with dynamic tension. The use of chassis and suspension from the larger M3 necessitating a modified body 55 millimeters wider than that of a ordinary one series coupe with panels that seem shrink-wrapped over the wider track needed front and rear. The whole shape sits properly hunkered down on its 19-inch Y-spoke alloy wheels, while a huge triple ducted air dam feeds the engine. A hallmark M-branded feature is this elongated chrome grille element on the front wheel arch, while the door mirrors are also from the M3. It's equally aggressive at the rear, where vertical slashes on the bumper mirror what's in front and four huge exhausts poke out from below the black diffuser, ensuring that enthusiasts won't mistake this 1M for a humbler 135i. Inside, BMW has had to work even harder, the 1 Series Coupe cabin having not originally been designed to suit the £40,000 price point. Even so, it feels pretty special in here as you seat yourself comfortably on the Boston leather trim sports seats with their embossed M logos and Kyle Army orange stitching. You grip the thick M Sport steering wheel and view through it properly bespoke M Sport instrumentation. There's more signature orange stitching on the door trims, the handbrake, the gear lever gator and the instrument cowling binnacle top. And you get uh, lovely Alcantara on the dash and the doors. And it's nice to find this car relatively practical too, at least by the standards of a class that includes two-seater only models like the Nissan 370Z. Two adults could be relatively comfortable here as long as the journey isn't too long. And there's a decently sized 370 litre boot too, which you can further extend by pushing forward these split folding rear seats. Now, I began and ended this test with very different perspectives on this 1 Series M Coupe. 
To be honest, I was initially skeptical about this car's £40,000 asking price, representing as it does an £8,000 premium over uh, the kind of BMW 135i coupe you could buy that also has 3 litre six cylinder power and is just half a second slower than this model from rest to 60. In any case, if you did want to spend £40,000 on a car of this kind, wouldn't it be better to do so on uh, an Audi RS3 with four driven wheels rather than just two and uh, five doors rather than just a couple? But uh, I've been converted. This, this car really does offer a very different driving experience to the 135i and it's certainly a more dynamic thing to own and drive than a, uh, an RS3. The Ingolstadt car apart, there aren't too many other really direct competitors. You could save yourself £10,000 on a Nissan 370Z, but well, it's a Nissan. And the same issue might put you off buying the kind of Mitsubishi Evo 10 FQ360 that would uh, save you a few thousand and give you four-wheel drive and a bit more power. But both of these cars, though they're uh, very impressive, they don't have the purity and quality that characterises this BMW. For that, you've got to stretch up to rivals like um, Audi's TTRS and Porsche's Cayman S, and they're in the 45 to 50,000 pound price bracket. And once you get to that point, well, you might as well think about buying an M3. All of which means that if you like this uh, one series M coupe, you're probably unlikely to be very tempted by anything else. Here in this car is everything you get in the kind of BMW M3 that would cost you around 50,000 or so more, and then some. Now, this might be one of the most affordable M cars ever made, but it's still a very expensive purchase, and one only partly justified by the fantastic twin turbo three litre six cylinder 340 brake horsepower engine. Hence the unique widened look with its exclusive 19 inch Y spoke uh, M alloy wheels, the twin dual Corona by Xenon headlamps, and the dual chromed exhausts. Now it's an effect that BMW has tried to continue on inside, where you grip a lovely M Sport leather trim steering wheel and you're seated on the standard leather trim sports seats that have this Kyalami orange stitching that's also continued on alongside lovely Alcantara on the doors. More uh, traditional um, executive niceties include uh, cruise control, dual zone climate control and a decent quality six speaker stereo system. Options, uh, well, they include uh, comfort access, so it's easier to get to the rear when pushing forward the front seats. There's also a Harman Kardon surround sound system and a rather pricey £2,000 professional uh, BMW sat-nav arrangement with hard disk storage. You can also specify adaptive headlamps and a high beam assistant that'll dip the headlamps for you at night. Now, given the ease with which you can hang the back of this car out, it's good to find that all-encompassing safety provision isn't optional. The dynamic stability control system encompasses elements such as uh, anti-slip control, ASC, dynamic brake control, that's uh, DBC, a drive-off assistant, uh, cornering brake control, that's CBC, and also functions that um, control brake fade and maximize wet weather braking bite. You also get six airbags. For a vehicle with this sort of capability, this BMW's efficiency figures are nothing short of phenomenal. After all, how many other 340 brake horsepower four-seater performance cars can you think of that emit less than this one's 224 grams per kilometre of CO2? Or can get close to this car's 29.4 miles to the gallon combined cycle fuel economy reading? Now, owners will have BMW's Efficiency Dynamics program to thank for this, uh, which includes things like brake energy regeneration and needs-based control of auxiliary units. And as with all the better M cars, this one should hold its value very well indeed, with many suggesting this to be a future classic in the making, all of which should compensate for uh, maintenance and insurance costs, which certainly won't be cheap. 
Driving enthusiasts will often tell you that sports cars aren't what they once were. With four-wheel drive and electronic interference rife in modern performance machines, uh, almost anyone can buy such a car and drive it very fast indeed. So where are the cars you have to master, the cars you have to tame, where yours are the risks and yours the rewards? Most manufacturers no longer make them, but BMW does. With compact dimensions, a reasonably light weight, explosive power, a proper differential and realistic pricing, this 1 Series M Coupe satisfies just about every wish on an old school enthusiast tick list and does so in a way that truly recaptures the spirit of original M Power models. As others have pointed out, if the M3 is a hunting rifle in its approach to delivering powerful performance, then this car's attitude is more akin to that of a sawn-off shotgun. It might not be pretty, but it's pretty darn effective, and something you mess with at your peril. A race car for the road, just as every true M-Power machine really should be. <laughs>